I've been building some rolling and sliding components lately in my projects, and I'm looking into plastics to use for some of those because I don't want to have to lubricate them. They're going to be somewhat inaccessible, and I would like them to withstand moisture and little bits of debris as well as possible. So the plastics that I'm looking into are straight Delrin, just a classic kind there. This is PTFE mixed in with the Delrin. We have MDS nylon, which is molybdenum disulfide. It has a certain ring to it. I haven't gotten tired of saying it yet. And this is UHMW here, both of these in quarter inch sheets. And all of these are from McMaster, hence the classic yellow sticker. There's a lot of info online about these materials, but it's almost exclusively for manufacturers and distributors. So you get people in polo shirts with the company logo on there saying, this stuff is great. It'll last forever, we promise. And that will help you narrow it down, but it doesn't really tell me how it's gonna last. The only way to really tell how something's gonna last is to do a test yourself in your situation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a test fixture to test these materials. Perhaps the most obvious way to test these would just be to do it by hand. But if I take this and I set it up and I just start running it back and forth, this is not very exciting. I'm already a half dozen cycles in and I'm pretty much bored out of my mind. If I want to do 10,000 cycles, it's going, to be, it's going to be bad. It's also not consistent as far as the force that's on there, the alignment, things like that. So what we need is a way to move it back and forth and we need a way to count the number of cycles. What I'm going to do, I haven't got it yet, but is uh, you just have a counter with a Hall effect sensor in it and you stick a magnet on whatever it is when it comes nearby, that's that. For the sliding part, this is pretty simple. You just need a motor that's gonna spin and make it go back and forth. And the easiest way to transform, transform rotary motion into linear is to set it up somewhat like a steam engine. And this goes around and this goes back and forth. I have a couple of motors on hand. I have a Westinghouse motor here, which has the cool classic Westinghouse logo, and I've set it up as a grinder for sharpening tungsten electrodes on the TIG welder. But this guy is your classic AC motor. It's at 3450 RPMs. It's a little too fast. I have this motor here, which goes at half that speed. It goes at 1725, yeah, 1725 RPMs. This one is slower, obviously by half, but still not slow enough. What we really want is we want a motor that's going to drive a worm gear. While I was wandering the internet looking for these different things, I'd stumbled across some different sets of gears. I'd been looking just strictly at gears. I thought, okay, fine, I'll run one of these into a, a worm gear. And what I came across was replacement parts for kitchen mixers. And it just so happens that I don't need to buy any parts for kitchen mixers because my mom has a kitchen mixer, which we got second or third hand. It's been in the basement and it's looking for a new home. So, I liberated this mixer from the basement. We want to mount this thing now, like like so, but this uh, flex spring mount, whatever hinge is down here in the way, so we need to cut that off.
this motor is it's not growing on me, it's doing the opposite. I'm becoming less and less fond of it. It sparks a lot on the brushes, it's all exposed, I'd have to cover this up somehow, and I don't quite understand what's going on in here. The other thing is that this motor is just, I think it's what you call a universal type motor, so it tends to run kind of wide open, it has that whining sound, and that would just be annoying. So what I'm going to do is to continue to use the gearbox and this frame that's on here, but I think I'm going to switch to this uh, sewer motor. And when I say sewer motor, I mean it's from a, a drain cleaner, one of the ones that has the spiky augers that you run through your your line. And the reason why it's separate is because we had one of these and then it got, the cord broke on one of them and we had to dig the thing out. So I'll throw in a picture here of how we dug up the sewer. It was over my head. It was over eight feet deep. So that was fun. That was a couple years ago. But in any case, we have the motor here. And what I'm going to do I think is use some of these timing belts and different things that are left over from my camera control arm project and run this into here. We'll just keep this armature spinning so that we can use the gearbox. I trimmed this side off here, lower than that one, so that when we put this armature we can run the belt around and hopefully it won't bump it. So we're going to give it a quick test. <laughs> At this point, this project has taken much longer than I expected already, and it's not even close to being done. Now that I have this thing down here, and this is going to work better for what I want, and I tested it, it has to raise up, and I won't be able to mount directly under here, and there's just a lot of things that have to change. So, I'm going to drop all pretenses of it being organized or polished at all. We're going to start stacking pieces just on top of one another like this, and screwing things down, and I really don't care. So I just need to get it to basically function for this one thing. We'll worry about the rest of it later. I think this is a project where uh, I didn't realize it, but this probably needs two versions. Version. And then we know all the things that we want to fix, which is essentially everything for the next version. And I'll probably build a nicer one later. So from this point on, just getting it done. We've got it set up pretty well now. We've got our cart here, which rides back and forth. These keep it in line side to side, but have just a little bit of play. We have two fastened to this piece right here, and then this one has uh, it's loose, so it can flex like this. We have a double joint connection. Well, it took a lot more work than I expected, but it did. we did get it together, and it works pretty well. Not too noisy, seems nice and smooth. So who knows, I'm pleased with it right now. I have my sample, it's, or my piece that's going to rub on top of the sample. I milled a slot in it with a V bottom so a ball bearing can fit like that and have some play. And then another one on the top of this piece, or the bottom rather. So they fit together like this and they can move. We set this on top of here and we get our hand in the pulley of course. Find a spot where it's not hitting the screws. Apply some load. 
the reason for the bearing versus just a single point is that it helps keep the piece lined up. If I just had a point, it would be able to move, but it would also be able to rotate. That's it, it's going back and forth. A Little bit of play here, I'll tighten that up, but we'll get you a close up and we'll come back next week with some results, hopefully. Thank you for watching.